Hey ho all, it's Christmas Eve and I'm repairing the dishwasher. The joys. Um, it's been running an E15 fault, which basically for those who don't know what Bosch dishwashers and E15 faults are, it's when water somehow gets into the bottom machine, there's a polystyrene float that gets pushed up, and when that polystyrene float gets pushed up far enough, it triggers a switch which tells you E15 error, don't use the machine because you're going to fry yourself, essentially. Um, boiling it down. Now I'm not a dishwasher engineer, I'm not an engineer, um, but I'm making an attempt to fix this. Um, I've looked at various th different things. The main way you would repair this would be to strip it all down, take the sump off and put a new sump on, but that's a lot of work for what I think it is. I have managed to find a replacement seal kit, which you can actually get direct from Bosch's website, but if you actually look up the code for this dishwasher, you won't find it. So in the description, I'll put the code for it. I didn't buy my seal direct or seal kit direct from Bosch, though I bought it from an online company. Um, so it's slightly cheaper, it was in the UK, so we get it faster. And they sell the Bosch kit, and they sell what seems to be a third party kit. Um, now, as we watch the video, I get a little bit panicky doing this because I think the seal's the wrong size, but it seems to be doing the job. Um, so, I'll crack on and I'll show you how to do this particular repair with this seal kit. All the best, and as this will probably get uploaded now after Christmas, because I've now got to go and prep the Christmas dinner once I get this dishwasher fixed. Um, I hope you had a great Christmas. I hope Santa was good to you for those who celebrate that holiday and I hope you all have a fantastic new year when it comes round. So one of the first things we want to do if we've got the E15 error is figure out where it's coming from. For me, I've discovered it's coming from my sump, which I'll show you, but I'll need to go take you through the process of finding out how to get to the sump. So if you've got an E15 error, there's several things that could be causing the leak which is setting off your flotation valve. With my machine, we had two problems. One was a door seal here, which had completely disintegrated, but my sump is also leaking, which I'm now going to try and fix the sump. This has already been changed by me. Now, with an E15 error, what you first of all need to do is dry up underneath your machine where the electrics are. Some people will tell you, tip your machine to pour the water out. Bad idea. Do not tip your machine to pour the water out. There are exposed circuit boards at a slightly higher level, which are high enough that if you tilt your machine back or forward without having already tried to dry up what you can, you could then end up short-circuiting your machine and destroying a board. So, then you do that, go and do what I'm about to do now. What I'm about to do now. So, to get access to the bottom of our machine, what we need to do is we need to take off this panel here, which is allows us to access a panel in behind here. Now this part here, if we just put our hand under, just slots out. Because just pull that down slightly, it's very easy to find and grab a hold of, and it pops out and comes away. We then need to take this panel off so we can access the Torx screws which are holding the silver panel here in place. Now, when it comes to your machine, you're going to have to check the size of the Torx bit you need. Because I saw other videos with Bosch machines where they said it was a Torx size 20 bit. But for my machine, maybe it's because it's slimline and not a full size. It's a Torx 15 bit that fits in here. Now, we're looking to take from the bottom side near the door hinge, six screws off. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do not want to take the top screws off because they hold the control panel in place. And we don't want to take the control panel off, we just want to take the door cover off to access another set of screws. Now, if your machine's old, you may need to clean these torque screws out a little bit because they do grab and hold a bit of dirt. job I'm about to do to try and repair my sump is using an actual repair kit for the seal. Um, the the full-on way is a complete dismantling just about of your machine 
inverting it upside down and connecting quite a few parts and putting a new sump in place because Bosch doesn't sell the seal on its own for the sump. They will sell you a new sump. But there is a kit that you can find on the Bosch site or the one I bought I believe is a third party one rather than a Bosch official one. And what we're going to do is put that on top of the seal inside it. Bosch does sell the kit of their own make. I bought the one which is a third party rather than the Bosch official because my gut feeling is they'll come out the exact same factory. I was too busy waffling, not sure if I showed you that correctly. So we'll just set it back in place and it's a case of pull from the bottom and away. Pull away from the bottom and the door comes off. Or the door cover comes off. This has now gave us access to a couple of screws under here. I'll change my camera angle so we can see exactly what it is we're getting into. But at this point, put gloves on or something just to protect your fingers from getting cut. I probably should have put them on prior to taking that part off. But now moving forward, yeah, definitely put them on. So, same size of Torx bit. And it's the two screws here and here that we're looking to take out. When you are taking things like these out, make sure you know which ones go where for going back. Because they're not all the same size of thread, they may be the same size of head, but the threading styles differ. So place them down, mark them, do it how you will recognise the right ones for going back. Even if that means grabbing a camera and taking a photo of each one as you go through. Might need a wee prizing tool to get this off. This one's quite tight, so just give me a second. All I'm using, I should show you, is a toothpick type tool. If I can find it. You could probably use a flat headed screwdriver as well. I'm just using this to get under the two little catches here, which allows that just to pop away free at the bottom. This is reasonably sharp, so gloves on, fingers off, and just pull away. Peel at the bottom and pull forward away from the machine. This now gives us the access we need to under here, which is where your sensor is. I'll try and position the camera. And we'll have a look at where the E15 problem triggers. I'll show you where my problem is and then we'll dry it up. So first things first, this is my sump, the grey thing you see here and that's where my leak's coming out of. It's coming round where I've got my pointy tool and you can see the white residue, probably salt idea from the water I'm guessing, comes round drips down this nipple and it eventually goes into the electrical safety mechanism which is a wee float which floats up and blocks the switch and that then gives you your E15 error and tells your machine danger danger Will Robinson you're about to fry yourself essentially. So I'll be replacing the seal from inside the machine without removing this entirely and hopefully that will resolve my problem. We shall find out when I go along. And I'll try and get light in and actually show you the flotation device, which with this slim line, slim line machine is easier said than done, but let's give that a bash. I am not sure how this footage is going to go because the screen on my wee camera, I've got the lines running up and down it, so I'm not sure if the sensor's picking up a picture or you're going to have lots of interference lines running down. But you can see the flotation device there. What happens is the water gets into your machine, however it's doing it, as I said, it was a seal here 
on the sump and a door seal on mine that's went faulty. There is other ways your machine could be leaking as well. I'm not an engineer, so I can't really talk to you about them, but I've saw in other videos people discussing other issues, although most of them do seem to be from the sump. Now, that flotation device, water gets underneath it, the wee plastic poly polystyrene circle that you can see lifts up, that touches the switch, and then your switch turns the machine to E15 error. What we want to do is we want to get into that area and dry it. Now, the best way I found is rolling up tubes of kitchen roll and sliding them in through the best gaps that you can find in your machine to soak up all that. And once you've soaked up all the water that you possibly can, we'll move on to the next stage. So let's do the soaking up first. Now, what I have found helpful is to slide a big long skewer, I've got metal skewers for cooking with, in and just prise it underneath the actual flotation device to be there, I can't find it because I'm looking through cameras and everything, not a lot of space. Prise it up underneath it and that allows you to then get your kitchen roll into the gap. I don't think that though is going on camera. Okay, bottom of the screen we can just see, there we go, moving it around. Just gently lift it up with a skewer. It's a big long metal cooking skewer I've got here. Make sure your machine's turned off. Unplug from the wall before you do anything like this. I should have said that at the beginning. I'll reiterate it if I do an edit. But I'll just get that underneath, which allows kitchen roll to be pushed through the gaps and soak up the water. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that on camera. I've already removed most of the water when I found out the error and ordered the part, but I know there's going to be a little bit more water in there because I had tried just cleaning my sump uh, seals, but that didn't do the job. So hence why I'm going the full repair kit route to see if that solves it. Now, there's my kitchen roll. If you're struggling to get it in, I find putting another skewer down the centre of the rolled up tube of kitchen roll helps you move it forward to get it to where that flotation area is and start soaking up any of the water. You can just move it and prod it and gently move it around nice and slowly. When mine's leaked I found it took about a third of a roll of kitchen roll to soak up all the water that was floating about in the bottom of my machine. And that's one of the big reasons when I'm saying don't follow other people's advice and just tilt it on its side. There's a lot of water in there and there's some circuitry floating around in a couple of areas that when you go under your own machine you'll see they're exposed, you get water in them, you could end up frying the boards on your machine. So you don't want to do that. But you want to get in with the kitchen roll, roughly the idea that I've tried to demonstrate. I can't do any better unfortunately because I've got a torch, a camera and a very tight working space but that's to give you an impression of what you do. And just keep changing that kitchen roll out and soaking up the liquid. Once you've soaked up all the liquid that you possibly can just by prodding it and getting it down into that flotation device and underneath it, then we are going to move forward and we're going to tilt our machine slightly forward to pull any other water down towards us. But it's just a prodding case, pushing and prodding very gently without poking any other parts just to get that to the flotation device and that just soaks up all the water. Pull out your kitchen roll and swap back and forward for each single sheet. Now, once we have that water out as best as we possibly can with a flat and level machine, what we want to do is take the machine off the level. And all we want to do is get yourself a chunk of wood, maybe an inch and a half, two inches, tilt your machine slightly forward and slide it under the rear just to create a small angle on the bottom to run forward any other water that's left in the machine. We go through the same process again, but the water will have pulled forward if there's any left. And then we can go through the process again if we feel the need by putting another block on top of this one to again just ensure we're pulling any of the rest of the water forward so we can get in with our kitchen roll and dry it up very methodically. 
so I may not be able to show you up close what I'm doing, but it's a case of take our rolled up tubes of kitchen roll and we slide it in if we need to. We take our second skewer and we roll it down or slide it into the centre of the tube to give it a little bit of structure and support so we can prod it in to where we need to go. And then we dry it up. And it would be, again, the time that I need to show you is when I unfurl my roll rather than keep it nice and tight. But that's the, the raw concept which I'm absolutely sure you can follow through. So this is all about giving you the ideas. Now remember, I'm not an engineer. I'm reasonably DIY competent and I've watched quite a few videos to see how other people approach this issue. So we're getting it into the machine and we're drying up whatever we can and then pulling it out. This machine is almost bone dry. I think. Because as I said, when it went wrong, I went in and I dried up everything I possibly could. Tilt it on its edge here, it just lets me see is there any other bits left over. Which there appears not to be. So remember, take your other skewer out. It was holding up your flotation device. And then we can take it off the block of wood, or blocks of wood, depending on whether we needed to use one or two to pull the water forward. And get the machine back on the level. So, we want to remove our baskets. If you've never removed the baskets before they do come out, just pull forward and tip up over the ends and we get our baskets out. We need both baskets out because we're going to be working in here, inside the machine here. So both baskets are the first things we remove. Remember and push your drawer runners back in. The next thing we need to remove is that. Just lift straight up and out. And now, basket area. That machine's got a lot of water still in there. That's not good, so we're going to have to sponge that up. All that water in there, take our sponge and soak it all up. And once we've got it all soaked up, we're going to put a towel in the bottom just to make sure when we take our screws out, we don't drop them down and they disappear into the sump or some other sort of bung that you want to use. The sponge, I personally feel, is a little bit too small, so a cloth, a towel, something of that nature. And again, sorry for the interference lines. It's the LED in this torch that causes it. We then want to remove the two screws here. And again, towel in place, just to prevent anything falling out. You don't need to watch me removing the screws completely, but there's two screws out. Now, this for me is the hardest and most fiddly part of the disassembly so far. Put the seal in might be harder, but up to this point, this is the hardest. There is a clip just here that you need to loosen to take the arm off, and then one on the back wall. But you're working sort of in on yourself and it's not the easiest of angles to get into. So take your time and what we want to do is with a very fine flat headed screwdriver is we want to prise back the clip and pull down on the arm at the same time. I apologise if my body breaks the viewpoint here. There's not a lot I can do about that because there's very little working space. Just don't puncture through the roof of your machine. There we go. So that's it off. That was a different technique from I did the last time. I prized and I got underneath, then I put my hand in and pulled it down. That was a bit easier than trying to do them two simultaneously. OK, 
because yes, I have had this off when I tried to clean the seals and it didn't work by just cleaning. So again, the clip at the back, here or here, want to release it and then pull the arm off. That one's much easier. From this point, we want to take our old whole arm assembly up, over and out. We can now remove our other two torque screws. And this will give us access, hopefully, to fit this all going to plan. As I say, I've not done this before. I'm not an engineer. I saw a German video. I saw, I think it was a Spanish video. I've not saw an English video on how to do this. It's a simple enough process, if a bit fiddly, it seems. Now, there are a couple of nubs on the sump here, which the instructions, and I think it was a Spanish video, tells you just to trim off. I'm guessing that's to allow better access to pull the tube round. We ain't going to get it all the way off, but if we take off what we can, that's what we need to do. And I've not seen one on the other one. Hopefully seeing it on this side. once we've trimmed them off. Now, our seal I've just put in a bowl here. We want to have the seal nice and lubricated, so a little bit of dish soap. We also want these nubs lubricated, so a little bit of dish soap round in where the nubs are. Because we're going to be pulling our seal up through that gap. And we need to push this down to make the space to pull the seal up through. We don't want to stretch our seal though. So once we've got the soap down, take, we're just going to rub our fingers gently along it, but we don't want to do any pulling on that. So not that motion, just back and forward, very gently with your thumb, because we want to limit as much as possible the amount of stretching that we do to our seal. So that's that, get a reasonable amount of lubrication on it. We're now going to try and do the fiddly part. So take a little bit of wire that comes with the seal. We're going to loop it round it, as you see there. And what we want to do is push this down and try and get the wire up through the machine, which is going to be easier said than done. So do it the right way, being daft. So this is me having to do this again, because I'm pretty sure I forgot to record it. It went easier than I thought it would, but I was saying on the previous recording that I thought I had that this could be a difficult procedure. You bend your wire so that there's enough bend in it to twist it through the holes. And then we're going to take and pop it up and through and repeat for the second one. Twice in a row that went quite easy. That surprised me. I thought that was going to be a really difficult part. Now, what we want to do is take and pull the wire up through and the tube, the seal tubing with it. Now I've got myself a pair of pliers just to get a better grip with a little bit of rubber on the end. Now we push that down and up. And there we go. That's our tube over. We want to take and move it round the back and take our wire out. Well, that's down. We want to take Make sure we've got enough lubrication. If we haven't, add some more round the back. And we need this to go down the back as we gently tug it through. No, 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 that's not what we want. We need it to go down. In that direction and this direction. I 
I should be wearing my gloves here because that metal's not the unsharpest. is go in with a prodding tool. Now, thinking of the screwdriver, because I saw that on other videos, I think I'm going to try this first, because it's a rounded edge, and I don't want to damage. Let's see if I can move that light. Don't want to damage the seal either. getting the seal back down. On the opposite side of the nub. There we go. So we have it round the back of one of the posts, we now need to repeat that procedure on the other post, one that we can trim back slightly. Let's just verify it again, enough lubricant, we don't want to damage the seal. Take our wire with the bent loops, and we're going to feed it up through the holes in the post again. First one went quite easy. And the second one's through. Just get it up a bit further before I try and grab it with my pliers. There we go. So push down on the sump to create as big a hole as we possibly can. Just don't push that far, we snap anything below. through. Take our little tool out the way and repeat getting it over the back and trying to knock it through. So my little proddy tool. As I've said other videos I've seen people going in with a screwdriver. I don't want to damage it. I feel this is a more gentle Maybe slightly fiddlier way of doing it, but it feels to me a gentler, less risky solution. I could be wrong though. I'm not an engineer. Use your own judgment on this a little bit. to hold on to them. I guess there's a balance point. I may not have found it. Let me just try and take some of that lubricant off my fingers. I feel this is going to take me a few minutes and rather than you showing you the same footage for a few minutes as I try to get this down I'm going to pause the camera and move it out of my way and give myself a little bit more working space. So moving the camera out the way gave me the space I needed. Took me about two minutes, three very maximum, to get it down. What I found was it was better to try and get it round that side first and in, 
and then once that side was down and in, I'm guessing there might be still a bit of a nub in there. But once I get past that side and down, I managed to pull it through and in. Now what we want to do now is feed our seal all the way around the exterior and underneath. I've got a couple of wee tools to help me keep this pushed down. So I'll just grab them. On one of the videos I saw suggested a wooden peg. I'm going to try and use these silicon bits here that I have as I think there's going to be less chance of damaging anything by using them. And then again take and push the seal into place just as such. Not sure if I was recording that correctly. I think my camera angle might have been a bit off when I've glanced up. So I've reset. I've got my bungs in place just to keep it up. These were silicon um, things for putting down actual silicon words, silicon sealant, the tube stuff. And then we just want to get this down in place. And I'm worried that my seal's the wrong size. really quite worried if my seal's the wrong size. The company site had two that they said was compatible. One which was a Bosch Genuine Spare and this one which I had the assumption of it was a third party one. fiddle with this but I think it's too large. Oh that's really weird. I think you saw the loop I was struggling with on camera. I'm actually really hoping you saw the loop I was struggling with on camera. To the point I was convinced that the seal was the wrong size. Turned the camera off, went and wrote to them guys I bought it off and says I'm pretty sure that this seal is the wrong size. I then came back and thought give it one more try and it went pop and seemed to just slot into place. So I don't know what changed, because I was struggling, I was struggling, I was struggling. I took the camera out of the way, I gave it one more try before I was going to take it out, and it seems to have popped into place. So maybe it wasn't too large after all, and maybe there was something that was giving it a bit of feedback. I'm going to have another few wee prods to see if it does seem to be sighted, and if it does seem to be sighted and I don't see any loop folding back anywhere, I'll then start putting this back together. Okay, I'm convinced now it is too large because what's gone and happened is it somehow popped over the top and went behind. I'm now struggling to get it out. So this is going to be a useful video even if I don't get the repair done of oh crap, here's something can go wrong. So we'll see how this winds up. But I need the camera out of the way to try and resolve this. So got it back. We don't want that too far down then, as we saw the issue. So that's as far as we want that to go. Still on the correct side. left over with, which is way too much. My gut feeling is that this may well still be a genuine part, but it might be for a full size machine or something. I'm not an engineer, so I don't know. We are fully tucked in, but I'm left over with that loop. I can 
conceptually wise, this is a good idea. And I think if the seal was the right size, it would work. tight as I can get it and that's too much left over it seems a hard call. This is a really hard call. I can see my seal this time. I'm going to go underneath and see if I can see anything sticking out anywhere. I think that's the seal in place. I'm going to try to put it back together and see what happens. I don't know if it's too large or not. I don't know if it's user error putting it in. That I'm just seeing that loop that I had and it's now popped in. But the first time the seal had popped over the back under in there when I got it to disappear. This time I'm not seeing it disappeared. It's over it's sitting there. Obviously impossible to see here. But pressing with that tool, that feels I think a similar oops, hang on, I nearly pushed that over the top again. Need to be careful. So we're going to try it and we're going to see. If we get an E15 error, we get another E15 error. So it's just the reverse then for putting it back together. We want to sight our screw. When we find it, we're going to tighten that up. That should pull this up towards us. Before it's fully tightened, I'm going to sight the other one. from the other angle where I've got a better viewpoint and not leaning across the camera again. arm back in place. So we take and we put our arm in at the bottom first. So it goes over, push down, clip it to the back, clip it to the top. Now our other two screws to reconnect at the other side of the sump. I really hope this has worked. I genuinely don't know if it has. Because the first time that loop seemed too large, it disappeared over the back of the sump. Looking from underneath, I'm not seeing anything, but does that mean we would see it? I don't know. Not an engineer. Confidence in my abilities, yes, but not an engineer. It seems what I can tell now sighted, and my thoughts of it being too large may well just be user error. We shall find out if it starts pouring water everywhere. I need to get it turned off quickly. Back in with that little drainage part. Which is that wrong way around? No, it wasn't. Just being incompetent. Being nervous and incompetent. So, and we'll lock it in place. We now put our arm back in place. Followed by the baskets. Oh, 
little baskets running smoothly. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test it in this state, that way if I can see if water's running out of it right away. By keeping the front off, I can get down and look and see if there's any leaks happening when I turn it back on. So it's time to plug it back in. So, so far so good if this is still recording. No immediate leaks. I'm going to run, can we see me on the camera? I'm going to run this pre-run cycle to its end and see if we get any water out of it. If we get no water, I'll stick it onto a longer cycle. Previously, pre-rinse didn't leak anyway, but at least it means if it's not going to leak this time, I've put it back together to at least the same standard it was, and that seal seems to be doing something, rather than leaving a big gap. We shall see. Anyway, call back shortly. So, so far so good. Pre-rinse has just completed its cycle, and not a drip. Now, as I mentioned previously, I think I mentioned it previously, that it didn't leak anyway on previous pre-rinses but it hasn't leaked this time either with the new seal in place which suggests the seal is doing a job because I had installed it incorrectly with my initial thoughts of it being too large then that loop had to go somewhere and they've left something exposed but we're getting the full drain that's us doing it now and no leaks so next stage is we'll try it with a full proper wash which is where we did get the leaks previously. At certain points in the cycle, it would start pouring water out the bottom. So that's the next stage, is try that. And fingers crossed if that works, then it looks like this seal has done its job. So the dishwasher's made its full cycle. It's turned itself off. We don't have a leak. So I'm going to put the door back on, and I'm going to put the guard at the bottom back in place. So the guard needs to go on first, so that's the first thing we'll do. Again, you can down low, and we're going to push this back into place. And clip, and clip, that's that. And there are two torque screws to hold it back. should have mentioned unplug this first before you start doing anything because we don't want them to get an electric shock. Shouldn't happen but better safe than sorry eh? the door. To attach the door just slide it up into place then drop the door down on its hinges, attach the screws closest to the hinges first and then work up before fully tightening all of them. And once the door panel is in place just click the actual kick panel back in place under the machine as well. It's very easy, it wants to lock in place. So despite the paranoia, that's worked. No leaks, that's it just ran a full cycle. It's on its last five minutes of the, the cool down cycle where it doesn't run any water but it wants the inside to cool. And no leaks. Previously, it did leak on that cycle. Obviously, I'm going to need to run it a few more times and before I upload the video, I'll let you know. But repair as far as it went has worked. So despite all the, the little worries about that looking too large on the seal, it popped in after all and seems to have done the job. One saved dishwasher. So hopefully this helps MD that needs a video how to repair at least one of the errors for an E15 fault or one of the potential reasons why you've got an E15 fault as there's various different ones that could cause leaks in the bottom of your machine but that was a, a replacement seal rather than having to take it apart put a new sump. Well, that has worked out really well. That's 10 full cycles uh, of a wash cycle fully laden um, on the fast speed version of it, like the Speed Perfect if you know your Bosch machine, but it's still the full proper cycle. And I think it's four of the 30 minute cycles and a single pre-wash 
I've opened up the machine fully, looked under it, not a drip of water. So the seal has done its job and has worked perfectly. So despite my panic and thing we threw out it when I was putting the seal in and it seemed to look too large and then pop in place, um, and then I was worried that the seal had went over the back of the sump, it looks like that was all user error. So if you are putting yours together, um, let us know how you got on, but I'll give you feedback if you ask in the comments down the line, is it still working, is it still not, but at the minute, 10 full cycles, 4 uh, 30 minute washes and a pre-rinse and nothing coming out of it, so I'm well happy, um, and since we've not quite made the new year, happy new year when it comes, although I'm guessing most people who will be watching this won't be watching this just as we're entering the new year, so I hope the rest of your year goes well from when you see this video. Thanks for watching and you guys take care. And if you like the channel, give me a wee sub. Um, you can go and look at my cooking videos. I've got lots of good cooking videos on here. Um, so take care. All the best, folks. Stay safe.